Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video we're going to actually look at integrals that look very similar to something that you might have seen as a derivative formula for inverse sines, inverse tangents, inverse secant functions. We're going to talk about where these come from and how we get these integral formulas over here on the right. We also have three separate videos following this intro video. Each video works a different function. So we have an entire video of inverse sine examples, an entire video of inverse tangent examples, and an entire video of inverse secant examples. Check those out if you're interested in practicing some of these. If we look at this first integral definition, the integral of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared is equal to the inverse sine of u over a plus c. So the first thing we want to make a note is that our a is just going to be some sort of a constant, and our u in the formula is actually going to be something that contains a variable. Okay, so we have a constant expression and a variable expression. We're just going to show you where this comes from. We're actually going to do this using the derivative formula. So if I took the derivative of this over here, say the derivative of inverse sine of u over a, we're going to leave off the plus c just because we know that the derivative of a constant is zero. Let's actually see what would happen if we use the derivative formula for this. Remember the derivative of inverse sine of something is 1 over the square root of 1 minus the something in here, u over a squared, right? That's our inverse sine derivative formula. But the chain rule says we then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of the inside would actually be 1 over a, that's our constant multiple, and then times the derivative of whatever u is, we'll say like u prime, right? So our chain rule would actually give us 1 over a constant multiple and then whatever u prime is. So now think about what that gives us, right? If I put my u prime on top, let's call it du on the top, so that would give us du on the top, I would have 1 over a, in other words, that's like having an a outside of the square root. So we'd have a square root of 1 minus, and then we would have u squared on top here, and we would have a squared on the bottom. So now we just want to describe to you what happens with this a. Think about when we pull something out of a root, we pull a perfect square out of the root, that usually becomes a single of that on the outside. We're doing the opposite here. We're going to actually take this single on the outside, this a, and distribute it into the root. So when it goes into the root, it's actually going to become an a squared. So we would multiply everything in the root by a squared. We'll actually get du over, if I multiply a squared times the first term, I get a squared and multiplying the second term by a squared would reduce the a squared on the bottom there, and we would just get u squared. So you can see here that the derivative of this is actually this formula for our antiderivative, right? And so that tells us that the antiderivative of this is actually the inverse sine of u over a plus some c. We're going to work the other two out just so you can see where they come from here. So the antiderivative of du over a squared plus u squared, again remember this a is just some constant, and the u is something involving usually x, right, but it's some sort of a variable expression, it contains your variable. And our formula is 1 over a inverse tan of u over a plus c. Now notice we have, not only is it an inverse tan, but we also have now a 1 over a out front. So let's just see what happens if we take the derivative of inverse, I'm just going to take the inverse tan of u over a, we'll leave the 1 over a off for now. So the derivative of the inverse tangent of u over a, what would that be? Well we should know the derivative of inverse tan of something is 1 over 1 plus that something squared, so it would be u over a squared. Now the chain rule would give us times the derivative of the inside, we have a constant multiple of 1 over a, so we'd get times 1 over a, and then we would get times the derivative of u, whatever that is, so we'd also get u prime, right? So we'll go ahead and think of that u prime again on top as du, and now on the bottom here I get a, there's no root on this one, right? So I get a times 1 plus, if I square this fraction it becomes u squared there, over a squared there. And so if I multiply in my a, that will give me du over a plus, now the a would only reduce one of the a squared copies there, so we'd still have u squared over a. 
And so we don't actually get exactly this formula, right? So the idea here is what did we need to do? Well, if we multiply it originally by another 1 over a in the front up here, I would have another 1 over a down here. And then if I distribute another a into that, then we get du over a squared plus u squared. So that's where the 1 over a comes from with our inverse tangent formula if we're taking the integral of something that looks like this. We get that 1 over a extra out there. Let's look at this last one here. We have the integral of du over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared. So notice this is a reverse order of the sine formula, right? So here our constant is in the back. So we have constant minus variable, both squared in the sine formula. Here we have variable squared minus constant term squared in the secant formula. So this is supposed to be 1 over a inverse secant absolute value u over a plus c. So if we go back and think about the derivative with respect to x of, let's just leave off the 1 over a again, let's just say secant of u over a. Well, think about what that is, right? So the derivative formula for secant is 1 over the absolute value of what's ever in there. So it'd be absolute value of u over a times the square root of whatever's in here squared. So it would be u over a all squared minus 1. And then the chain rule would give us again times that constant 1 over a in there and the derivative of u, u prime. We'll also go ahead and call that du, so we'll call it du over. Now what do you notice? This a and this a are going to reduce, right? So we get absolute value u there. We get the square root of u squared over a squared minus 1. And we're close to this formula, but we would need to reduce this a squared here. It's in the root, so what would I actually need on the outside to reduce it? Well, I would need another 1 over a like we did with the tangent. So if I multiply this formula by 1 over a, and so if we distribute this a into the root, it would actually become an a squared inside the root. So we actually get du over, here we'll get absolute value of u, if I distribute an a square in there, I would get just u squared on the first term, minus I would get a squared for the second term. And if you go ahead and look at this, you'll notice the only difference here now is the absolute value. The absolute value has to do with the sine of inverse secant in quadrant two. So our formula for antiderivatives here, we just go ahead and leave off the absolute value. All right, everyone, check out our example videos on how to do integrals that look like each of these. We've got one for inverse sine, one for inverse tan, and one for inverse secant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.